Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Veronica Howard. So we're delving into some slightly more advanced content here. What I'm talking about are some of the variants of differential reinforcement. Differential reinforcement is as is typically presented by simple textbooks. This idea of reinforcing one thing and extinguishing another. Well, previous videos have disabused that. We know that it can be extinction for one thing or punishment for one thing plus reinforcement for something else. But behavior analysts have found a way to really artfully uh, change behavior using some of these variants, which will be important if you're going to use differential reinforcements uh, in clinical practice. So when we're talking about these variants, we know that there are several ways that you can use this in applied settings. One of them, for instance, is what's called differential reinforcement of alternative behavior. And that means that we're going to we're going to specify something else to do instead of a problem behavior that we're trying to decrease. So again, we're picking something else and we're saying, hey, we're going to reinforce that behavior. But this behavior we're trying to decrease, we're no longer going to reinforce that. We abbreviate this as a DRA procedure. You can also have something called a DRI, or differential reinforcement of incompatible behavior. This is slightly different from a DRA. Now, let me go back for a second. DRA, we said, was choosing an alternative behavior. Differential reinforcement of an incompatible behavior is something that is both an alternative response, but it's something that you cannot do at the same time as the behavior you're trying to decrease. For instance, if I'm working with young kids in a school, maybe what I'm going to do is uh, reinforcement is available for every 10 second interval that their hands are in their pockets rather than knocking all the uh, locks on lockers. Or maybe reinforcement is available for whispering when we're having circle time, but reinforcement's never available for shouting. So you want to choose something that cannot be done at the same time as the target undesirable behavior. Uh, if you can't do them at the same time, and reinforcement is only available for the incompatible behavior, not the target unwanted behavior, you're going to see more of that incompatible response. We can also have something called a DRH, or differential reinforcement of high rates of behavior. This is when reinforcement becomes available if the behavior happens really rapidly or really fluently. So you want to pick how much behavior you need per unit of time. Right? So maybe, maybe a spouse feels most love when they receive 10 text messages per day and they're feeling ignored if there are fewer than, uh, fewer than 10. Now we know that the, the rate of behavior that we need for that day is 10 or more of these responses, right? This is uh, DRH. You also have the opposite. You can do a DRL, which is where reinforcement is available, but only if the target behavior uh, is below a certain threshold. Same spouse example, maybe the, the spouse feels harangued if they receive 10 calls from their spouse per day. And reinforcement is only available if they call less than 10 times per day. We also have something called a DRO procedure. This one can be pretty misleading because we often say that you can't reinforce the absence of a response. We have something called the dead man test, which means you can't reinforce a behavior that is something that a dead man can do. Things like laying or being quiet or things like that don't pass the dead man test. But DRO is one of those interesting exclusions to that rule. It's an exception. In a DRO procedure, we provide the reinforcer following a brief period of time where a specific target behavior didn't occur. So conceptually speaking, you're providing reinforcement whenever any other response, it could have been anything at all, didn't occur. In the case of maybe a foul-mouthed teenager, maybe we provide a reinforcer for every hour that they haven't used some form of adult language. Uh, we're just providing the reinforcer based on a period of time when the target response didn't occur. These are some of the more advanced conceptual examples of differential reinforcement. You may find yourself using some of these from time to time. It, these can be confusing, so I encourage you to go back, take some careful notes, see if you can find some examples of these. Those can be helpful as well. And let me know if you have any questions.